Welcome to the Dog Trainers Podcast, a podcast created by dog trainers, for dog trainers, or anyone who's ever fallen in love with man's best friend. Episode 8, which training collar is best? If we can, can, can we move on to some of the other collars? Yeah, sure. Real quick? Yeah. Cool. So let's kind of go down, down a little bit. Okay. Um, one thing that we've seen is so right underneath prong collar, if we're going to put things in kind of a hierarchy, yeah. um, is this, is the Starmark Pro Trainer. This is a great invention um, because it is a plastic prong collar. It's definitely more delicate on on to look at. Um, it doesn't look as ferocious, uh, but it does give you similar quality of control, right? I wouldn't say as much uh, as the prong collar does, right? Um, but we started to see that this is like a great happy medium for people. Um, who are a little bit more um, uncomfortable with the actual prong collar itself. So Starmark Pro Trainer um, is is what it's called. They make them for big dogs. They make them for small dogs. Um, and then uh, that's actually, I haven't had any particular problems with that other than if the dog is very powerful. Mm -hmm. Just remember, guys, the fact that we're working with plastic, um, you, we do run the risk of things falling apart or mm -hmm. plastic getting worn out. So that's something we want to pay attention. Can to. I comment uh, quickly on star marks is yeah. the, the, the thing about them is I agree with everything that you said that they're, they're like easier on the eyes. They're easier on the dog. They are, which mm -hmm. technically equates to them net, like being less effective in a sense than a prong collar, but sometimes that's mm -hmm. exactly what you want. So sometimes, yeah. sometimes like owner aside, even if they don't mind having a metal prong collar, having a star mark on is like a, a tactical decision. I, I recently had a, you remember Winston, he was one of my, my, uh, yeah. uh, dogs that I was, uh, fostering for a, a rescue and he was really sensitive. Um, I didn't do much e-collar work with him just because I just never got to off leash with him. And, um, I would do some prong work with him, but he was such a sensitive dog that he just liked his star mark so much better because it doesn't, mm -hmm. doesn't have as, as like strong a quality as a, as a metal prong collar does. Yeah. Um, the only like really downside I see, cause I agree. It's plastic. So it gets a little nerve wracking. If I had a really strong pulling dog, I would just go metal prong for safety. Um, mm -hmm. But like working with star marks, my only problem with them is like putting the little plastic links together can be hard. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, that's if, it. If you, if, yeah. If you guys think putting a prong collar together is hard. Yeah. Star mark. Taking apart and, and putting together a star mark, which is cool because they made it freaking a uh, Rubik's cube of a puzzle to take the, right. the links on and off. Um, so sometimes I've gotten calls for people to be like, I got my training collar. I just don't know how to size it now. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I, they, they will literally come into the office just so I can size it for them. So, um, it is a little bit of a, of a trick to it. I, that'd be a great YouTube video. We should make a YouTube video how to take Dude, on a really star. I know how to do it and it's hard. Like I, I see yeah. you do it <laughs> when I'm at your house, I'll see you like take them on and off and I'll keep you in mind when I'm doing it. And I'm like, it takes me like <laughs> six times as long. It's pretty. It's pretty, I mean, it's pretty easy. I break I links when I do it. Like I accidentally break yeah. it. I'm not <laughs> You're too strong, man. You're too strong. Uh, so yeah, so we got the star mark collar. Uh, it's a good little step down in sensitivity for dogs. Um, so definitely uh, if you guys are, are on the fence with a, a prong collar, um, you know, if you guys want to try the star mark, go ahead and start, try it. Try it and see if you like it. Uh, remember, the key is what collar is going to give me allow me to grab the dog's attention with the least amount of force. Okay. And can I just say one um, last so, thing is they're even cheaper ahead. than prongs. They're like 10 bucks. Oh my God. Star marks are they're great. 10 bucks yeah. versus prongs are like 35 bucks on Amazon right. or 25 bucks. So it's great. Okay. So let's move down the list a little bit. So I think right under star mark, would you say like, like oh, choke, chain? choke chain? Yeah. Choke chain. So choke chain was the, like the, uh, and a lot of like, protection sports and you know uh, military dog training and all that stuff the choke chain itself was the collar of choice for many many years and there are still trainers today that that only believe in choke chain mm -hmm. um choke chain a uh, couple things that you guys want to keep in mind for choke chain so a the proper name for a choke chain is a slip chain Okay, because it slips in and out of that ring very quickly. It turned into the choke chain over the years, uh, the same way that you know the shock collar is actually the remote collar turned into the shock collar, and right. now it's back to remote collar. So, uh, or it's called e collar. E -collar now. Yeah, uh, yeah. Things things just kind of evolved throughout the years. Uh, don't let the name choke chain uh, affect you too much, because the the whole point of the choke chain um, is that it has has a quick action, right? So sometimes the jingle of the chain that 
sound that the chain makes. Um, they come in different gauges. So usually in my experience, the thinner the gauge of the chain, the more attention it grabs. Mm -hmm. But obviously we always have to keep in mind the strength and reactivity of the dog that's behind that leash. So, you know, I wouldn't put a really thin chain on a very strong uh, Rottweiler, right. right? Who's reactive because that dog will at some point could very easily break through those links. It doesn't matter how strong the metal is. So we have to always make sure that we have the right gauge for the thickness of the dog's neck. Um, and we have to make sure that the action on that chain is smooth um, in order to get the results that we want. Now, uh, some of the, the the pros that I would say for the choke chain, uh, in my opinion, and, and throw in any that you that you have, Mariano, mm -hmm. um, it's sleek. It's very sleek. It actually mm -hmm. looks kind of decorative, mm -hmm. right? So if you ever seen a dog on a choke chain, it looks kind of nice, right? Like you could put like a pendant on there if you wanted to. Um, so it's it's easier on the eyes. Um, it can be effective as a training tool. Definitely, we 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 we've used them before as training tools for sure. Um, the only difference is. Um, if the dog is very powerful or very used to being, uh, to, to showing opposition to things around his neck, sometimes we can see that uh, the choke chain does require a heavier, more forceful correction mm -hmm. um, in order to get the result that you want in grabbing the dog's attention. So just simply based on our philosophy as balanced dog trainers, if you have to really put your back into that correction, um, it may not be the best, it may not be the best uh, training tool for that dog at that time. Now, um, I'm just going to bring this up now. Our goal is we we do want to phase down in training collars. So sometimes I might start on a prong collar and I might work my way down to like a martingale, right? Like I got a martingale right here. Um, so it, it really just changes based on, on how well you've conditioned, uh, but that is also the goal, right? So that way we can have control, but maybe a more advanced dog in training may not need as much uh, control as he previously did because now he's better behaved. Right. Yeah. I think it, it's, it's definitely something that I, I get asked this question a lot. Like, well, you know, somebody brings their dog who pulls like a train to you in a harness and then you recommend a certain type of collar or another. They're like, okay, well, when can I start walking him on a harness again? And then that's, that's when we have this sort of conversation a lot. Um, mm -hmm. with my personal dogs, I don't really, I walk them on whatever, cause they're on e-collars anyway. So other than that, I mean, you know, I'm comfortable with them off leash. I'm comfortable with them on a harness. I, it really doesn't matter. So it is kind of nice to have that sort of option when the dog is trained, e-collar or not, when they're conditioned properly and you're comfortable that they're going to respond to your boundaries, then mm -hmm. you definitely have, you know, a little more leeway there. Um, to get back to choke chains, the same sort of benefits apply that apply to the Starmark. They're super cheap. They're everywhere. You'll find them everywhere. Like mm -hmm. Starmark, uh, excuse me, uh, prong collars, good, proper Hermspringer prong collars. I don't really find them in stores. It's like Amazon or their website or, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. Choke chains you can find in all the different like Petco, PetSmart. Um, they're really hard to mess that up because cheap prong collars are like sharp in their points. They're not supposed to be sharp. So don't buy those. Um, mm -hmm. A choke chain, it's kind of, I don't know really how you mess up a choke chain. So it's a bit of a safer mm -hmm. bet if you're going that route. Um, right. It's easier to put on and off. That's a huge one. Um, mm -hmm. They do look really pretty. That could be cool. I, I'm thinking of, um, of a few dobies that we can think of with like choke chains on and there's Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and they make different types of decorative choke chains, by right. the way. If you guys go to the Herm Springer website and look at their choke chain selection, they have like four road choke chains. They have like all these pretty rings. They have like all these different types of, of collars that to use on dogs. And they actually have some specifically for certain types of work. Um, you know, they, they have like a whole collar that looks like a chain link fence. And I, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Remember, yeah. Yeah, it looks it looks great. Um, but yeah, they, they all kind of have their purpose. The ones uh, sorry to cut like, you off. No, you're good. The ones that look like tennis chains are funny too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, the ones that I think another, you know, the final thing would be when it comes to a choke chain, there are certain, certain shows, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that don't allow like prong collars and stuff. So people use choke chains. Mm -hmm. They're, they're kind of mm -hmm. more widely accepted, I would say. Yeah, like that, like the AKC. You're not allowed to do a canine good citizen on any type of prong collar, right. star mark. Uh, so yeah, that's that's very normal. Um, I will go ahead and, and give you guys a little bit of information on the choke chain. So choke chains are sold. Uh, they're they're sized by two inch increments, right? So you'll have you know like a 12 inch, a 14 inch, a 16 inch, an 18 inch. So they go up in size. Uh, by by two inches. Um, and the reason for that is is they always tell you you want to make sure you have about a good two inch um, tail on that choke chain. So um, that's that's how you properly fit a choke chain. Uh, however, I have I do notice in common pet stores, um, 
they don't have a great selection of choke chains sometimes. Like sometimes they might have the size before my dog and the size mm -hmm. after my dog, and it's just annoying. And nothing, nothing makes a choke chain more ineffective than it being too big. Yeah, or or those choke chains that have the nylon like in the in the links. Yeah, in those. yeah. Yeah, I like I like I like those sometimes, but they definitely don't necessarily have the same speed or the yeah, same action. it messes with the with the like functionality a little bit to me. Yeah, the loose, the jiggliness. Of right. The leash. I'll also say right. too that dogs with big old domes like bully breeds that sometimes it's hard to find a good choke because the head is so big. I know the neck so is so much heads. smaller that you end up with a tail that's like six inches long. And yeah, it just doesn't quite work out. Yeah, true, 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 true. Thank you for listening to the Dog Trainers Podcast, a podcast created by dog trainers for dog trainers or anyone who's ever fallen in love with man's best friend. See you next time.